like to show you how HTML5 caching works in this short uh, video tutorial. So let's just start it. So one of the basic things you need to do is, uh, is essentially declare uh, in your HTML5 uh, an application cache manifest file. And that is the, uh, uh, is the second line you can see it basically says manifest is equal to app cache dot app cache this is the name of the file. Uh, I will show you the uh, contents of the cache file. It's very simple to uh, explain it to you. It's a cache manifest file. We usually put in a version number at the top of the file. And uh, here I've indicated that what I'm caching is the offline.js explicitly caching it. And uh, what this does is uh, it declares to the, the web server as to this is a, a cache file. There's one more thing you need to do on Apache. Uh, for other web servers, it might be a little bit different. So I will show you in your .htaccess file, you can add this uh, Mimi content, add type text cache manifest uh, .apache. And this is the same extension. So this tells you this is a cache manifest file. So let's just go over a little bit over what this uh, um, sample is doing. It's basically, uh, I have a button which uh, I click on and it does uh, install and it checks for updates. And that's all it is doing and there's a div called info that is there so I can insert some log messages. So uh, let's go into the offline.js example. So this is the function which basically inserts uh, whatever message is given insert before the element so we can kind of see what's going on. So that's uh, this. So uh, in for Windows uh, uh, caching what you can do here is uh, on load I'm checking that if uh, application cache is available in your browser feature if it's not available it's going to log a message if whether local storage is available and uh, there is a way to get the initial cache status and I'm going to be displaying the initial cache status and uh, that's what this is the show cache status uh, function and uh, what this is doing here is fairly straightforward it basically takes in a number and translates it into a human readable form. So you can see the status message is more uh, printed in a human readable form, uncached, idle, checking, downloading, and so on. There are various even listeners you could add to this object. So for example, the application cache, uh, we are checking, you can write, like just writing a log message, checking for application update, and so on. So for various events, you can uh, uh, have functions uh, assigned for that. So one of the more interesting functions uh, I have here for here is that if when an update is ready, uh, I can say uh, a log that is update is ready and we also check the application status is uh, clearly ready. Uh, we basically have a pop-up saying a new version is available uh, whether we should load it or not to the end user. And this is the function which will uh, basically cause uh, the page to be reloaded with the new thing. So let me, uh, let's just go over and see how this works. So if I go into uh, my top file here, I can show you an example, which uh, basically when I was running through, it says the initial cache status is idle. Now it's online, checking for an application update, no application update found. So if I click on this button, uh, there should be no update. So it is going to say no application update found. This is the latest status, so which is good. So let's say, for example, uh, you did update your files and you don't want the cache versions to be used. So how you can go about doing it? So let me just clear this network uh, information here so you can see that's what it is uh, there is one more thing you can uh, check in the um, uh, chrome is uh, how uh, where your cache is so basically you can point your browser to chrome app cache internals and you can uh, see uh, the status of the app cache uh, here for example if i update it you will see that uh, the last update time is this and access time is 10 38 uh, 09 so if i go in again and just uh, do check for update and check here, reload it, and you can see that it isn't really changed. Update time and everything has not changed. So let's say you have a new version of your files and you don't want the cache versions to be used. So how would you go about changing it? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, let me go and uh, show it to you. So you basically go into your cache manifest and change something. Usually we just change in a number. So I'm going to just put in a number saying the version three of the manifest. And just to be able to see for ourselves that something has changed, I'm going to change this log function. Instead of just uh, showing star, 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 it's going to now show dash, dash, dash. So that way we will kind of know if something has changed. And we go back. Now, uh, let's say if I uh, click on check for updates, 
uh, this is the confirm pop-up it says new version is available load it I said okay and here you can see that it uh, went over the network got my new version of the offline file and uh, here you can see that the log message now has dashes which is what the changes is so this is a very uh, easy way for you to be able to uh, cache in the browser uh, your application files maybe uh, things that don't change and speed up the process because they won't be loaded and we can take a look in the app cache internals if I just uh, update it you can see that this last access time was this and last update time was this so this is a great way to be able to create more optimized uh, application caching and uh, I've shown you how to use in Apache if you want to use it in some other browsers you can do that too if you are looking for more information, you can basically go on to my site, Gore Associates, and you can click on HTML5 or JavaScript. And thank you for watching this short screencast. You have a great day.